sing together, Father in heaven. Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father in heaven, lead us not into temptation, but God delivers.
blessed name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. I want to thank Mr. Peng for giving me this opportunity and also the principal of the school. At this very moment, I'm glad to meet you all through this media and God has a message today to me and I thank God for that. Let us look to God in prayer before we go into the message. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We pray, we ask that your presence will be here, Lord. By your spirit, you will move mightily in the midst of all the students, Lord. Even the teachers who are listening, be with them, Lord. That your word come in power, in clarity, and in authority, Lord. At this very moment, we break every bondage. We break every work of darkness, Lord. And we pray that your marvelous light, Lord, will come upon each student, Lord. Oh, that you will liberate them, Lord, and you will set them 
right before you as we ask all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. Dear beloved, at this very moment, I like to share with this theme in mind, total dependency. Total dependency. The passage that I've taken for today's message is from Exodus chapter 14, verse 1 to 14. But I only want to read verse 10 to 14. So those who have your own Bible, please read chapter 14, verse 1 to 14. And let me read verse 10 to 14 as I read verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in this wilderness? Why have you dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptian whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Here in Exodus chapter 14, we read about Pharaoh and his chariots and horsemen coming after the children of Israel. They are in Pai Harirot between Migdol and the sea, opposite of Baal, Zaphon. By being in such a position, the children of Israel has entrapped themselves and they have no place to run. Yes, church. They have gone into a place and God has asked them to camp in a place where they are entrapped. At one side is the mountain, on the other side is the sea and before them is Pharaoh and the chariots and the horsemen. Pharaoh was very happy because he thought we have cornered the Israelite. Where they are, they can never run from. So he was very happy because Israel is in a fix now. They don't know what to do. Many times in our life, we too are in such a position. We are at the age where we don't know where to turn to. The people were in fear and cried out to God. And then they came to the man of God, Moses, and they said, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. What was Moses' reply to them when they said this? And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he has accomplished for you today. For the Egyptian whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and the Lord shall hold your peace. By saying these words, Moses declared in the midst of the children of Israel that his total dependence is upon God. Yes, his total dependence is upon God. When you have total dependence upon God, you will 
Number one, my point is, have no fear but faith. You will have no fear but faith. Moses told them, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Do you know, fear paralyzes every movement and every thought that is in our lives. We cannot think of ourselves and we don't know what to do next. Yes, most time, you know, when fear grips us, we tell ourselves, what must I do? What, how, how am I to do it? You know, these are the aspirations that we have. By being fearful, we resign to a place where we say, it is impossible to escape. That's what the children of Israel say. You know, they went to Moses and they said, why? Now, where are we to run to? We cannot escape anywhere. And that is the result of fear in us. Bible says, what is impossible for men are possible for God. We read in Luke chapter 1 verse 37, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Yes, with man is impossible. But with God, there's nothing that is impossible. So you and I must learn to trust God. Here, we need to realize with God, nothing is too hard. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, we read, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. According to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. We all know Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90 years old when Isaac was born. But God said this when I, Abraham was 90 years old and Sarah was 80 years old. Is there anything too hard for God? Yes. Looking at Abraham's age 90 and Sarah's age 80, she is beyond childbearing. Indeed, it's a situation where we only can view impossibility. But here God says, is there anything too hard for God? Nothing is too hard for God. All things are possible with God. The only thing that we need to do is to trust Him. My second point, you will see God's act. When you have total dependence upon God, you will see God's act. Moses told them that they will see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for them today. Which he will accomplish for them today. Yes, God says he will indeed make a way for them. He will accomplish it for them today, that the day when they were there, when Pharaoh and the chariots and the horsemen, you know, when they came, at that very moment, Moses declared and said that God will accomplish this act today. God said in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call on to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty thing which you do not know. Yes, sometimes, you know, our God is so great when we call on to him. He is the God who answers us and he answers us by doing great and awesome things to the point where our mind cannot comprehend. You will stand before God in amazement because you and I serve a God who can do mighty acts. Acts which our mind cannot understand. When you trust God, He will act on your behalf. All that you need to do is to totally trust Him. Trust Him through and through. He is the Creator of the whole universe. Heaven and earth is His making. You know, God created them all. Psalm 
Psalms 91 verse 1 and 2 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Yes, He is a God in whom we all should put our trust because he is the most high God and he is a God who will shelter all those people who trust him, believe him under his shadow. In Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2, it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, there shall, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. These are the promises that God says. All that I just say, it's impossible. To walk through the Red Sea is impossible. To walk through the Jordan River is impossible. To be thrown into the fiery furnace and the fire did not scorch you. That is impossible. Impossible. But these are the impossible acts that God did in the life of the believers then, the saints then. And the Bible says He is an unchanging God. Yesterday, today, forevermore, He is an unchanging God. What He did then, He is able to do today. If you have a total dependence upon the Lord, you will see His mighty act. And my third point is when you depend upon the Lord, you will no more see your trouble. You will no more see your trouble. Moses said, for the Egyptian whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. I read again. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. When your total dependence is in God, He is a God who relieves you of all your trouble. Of all your trouble. Students, you can believe that. You trust God. He's a God who is for you, not against you. He loves you. He cares for you. And when you entrust everything before Him, you will no more see your trouble because He will relieve you of all it. When you are under His shelter, no harm will befall you. He is like a mother hen who protects her chick under her wing. Psalms 91 verse 4 to 10 tells us this. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wing you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. This is the promise of God. And God says, nothing, no harm, no danger. That will come, uh, that will indeed bring trouble into your life. And my fourth point, when you totally depend upon the Lord, you will see the battle is God. The battle is God. Moses said, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. You and I have a God who will fight for us when we are totally dependent on Him. 
He is the God who directs our path and at the same time he is the God who fights our battles. The Lord God was with Joshua when he captured Jericho. Jericho was an act of God. Jericho was a battle that God gave to the people of Israel. Life. They worshipped God, they shouted with a loud voice and the fort of Jericho tumbled down. It was God who made the fall, the fall of the fort. God gave them the victory. The Lord was with King Joseph when he faced his enemy. The four kingdoms came against King Joseph. But then God fought the battle. When the world worshippers, they worship God and when the trumpet sound was raised up, the enemies, they fought each other and they killed each other. Because God told King Joseph, the battle is mine. Be still. The battle is mine. When Shadrach, Meshach, Abinego, when they were thrown into the fiery furnace, God was there as the fourth person in the fiery furnace. The king was amazed. The king was wondering, we threw three people into the fiery furnace. Who is the fourth person? And that was God. That was our Jesus. Yes, he is a God who fights our battle. He is a God who stands with us in our battle. All that we need to do is to trust Him, believe Him. With this, I'd like to end my message. Praise be to God. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this message that you have given. As we totally surrender ourselves, as we totally depend on you, you are a God, Lord, who is with us, for us, and you're a God, Lord, who will act on our behalf, Lord. All that we need to have is faith, Lord, not fear. The people of Israelites, they had great fear when they saw Pharaoh, the chariots, and the horsemen, Lord. But Moses looked at them and said, have faith, have faith. Yes, you're a God, Lord, who delights in the faith of your children, Lord. Without faith, we cannot please you. But today, we pray, Lord, that these students, Lord, will have that faith in you, Lord, so that you will work everything in their life, Lord. Whatever trouble, whatever hardship, difficulty that they are going through, they will know for sure, if God is for me, who can be against me? My God is a God who will shelter me from all works of darkness from all works of the evil one. The devil cannot touch me, cannot cause any harm to me because my God is my shelter. For he fights my battle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We ask all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Father, we won't
insecure in. Come on, let your voice 